Welcome to our fourth video and fourth session on sizing simple span wide flange steel beams using multi-frame. In this particular session we're going to be performing the analysis in multi-frame and sizing the beams in multi-frame. As we mentioned earlier this is a trial and error process. We'll be sizing for both strength and stiffness and uh, we'll go back to our spreadsheet which we started with <clears throat> you'll notice that we have a column here which represents our sizing results for stiffness which as we mentioned occurs under the live load um, only and then we're going to size for strength where we're looking for a moment capacity or keeping the uh, bending stress under 50 KSI under the full factored load of 1.2 self plus 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. <clears throat> so we start with a spreadsheet. You're going to give it the appropriate name with your name on it and that's the first thing you want to do because many of you forget and you send us files that don't have your name on them which is a pretty unfortunate thing since you don't get credit for what you did. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to fill out this entire table for your particular assignment, but right now we're going to do it for this 30 by 30 um, column grid. Um, as we said, we've already created the multi-frame file. We've introduced the loads, and so now we have to go through by trial and error and size the members. So we start up where we left off before. And by the way, we can size. So I'm going to go here to the frame window. And we've got the same beams everywhere, which are these W18 by 35s. <clears throat> and we have to size sequentially. We have to do the secondary beams on the roof and then the primary beams. And the reason is that the secondary beams are a load on the primary beams. And therefore, we have to know the accurate weight of the secondary beams before we size the primary beams. <clears throat> Likewise in the floor we have to size the secondary beams before we size the primary. And by the way according to the definition of multi-frame those are the secondary beams on the floor and these are the secondary beams on the roof and these beams right here we're not even really sizing at this point because we don't know what the wall loads are and we don't know what the role will be of those beams in terms of some kind of moment frame action on the boundary of the building for resisting lateral forces however we are going to treat these beams these boundary beams as if they're secondary beams because they're actually quite useful to us at this point in time in our sizing procedure and the reason is that they are connected to the columns. The columns are so stiff that they're not moving vertically uh, any significant amount under the load. So when we go to look at deflection we're actually going to be looking at deflection in these beams here um, <clears throat> as indicators of the performance of the beam relative to that issue of movement. Uh, in fact, we might end up, when we're all said and done, these beams might have to meet a substantially greater stiffness criterion than our L over 360, which is what we've said we have to meet in order for the floors to feel comfortably rigid to people walking on them. These walls might have to meet a criterion of L over 600 uh, because of the brittleness and stiffness of the glass, or if there are brick spandrels in those walls, uh, then we're going to have to meet a much greater stiffness criterion. But for right now, we haven't defined what the perimeter walls are. We haven't defined the role of those beams, but we're going to use them to help us out. And in fact, when we go back to our loads window and we look at something like, uh, we go up to case and we pick dead, you'll notice we actually loaded those beams the same as we did these interior ones. <clears throat> so we can size these beams 
and then make that the size of all the rest of them. So we're going to make use of these, these perimeter beams that are not considered either secondary or primary, uh, but they have some other role which is as yet undefined. So these secondary beams in the floor have got to be sized before the girders get sized. But we don't care whether we do the roof or the floor first, so we can start with either one. Normally though, it's wise just to start at the top of a structure because as you work down, loads accumulate and you don't want to size columns at the bottom of the building before you've sized columns near the top. Um, but there's no technical reason we can't do the floors before we do the roof because those two systems are basically independent of each other and they don't load each other and therefore we don't need to know one before we know the other. Just to be methodical in the usual sense though, we're going to start with the roof and we're going to begin with these beams and um, we're going to look at how they're performing. So if I come over here, um, let's see what load we want to put this under. Um, let's put it under full factored load and then let's also turn off the numbers for the moment because the numbers are too messy. Excuse me, I just swipped, switched applications there. Um, <clears throat> but we can click on this member and we can say um, that has a stress of 7.45 KSI or kips per square inch which is way below 50. So we'd say this beam is hugely over-designed. Um, I'm thinking this is probably going to be more like a 10 inch deep beam. So we're going to go back here. We're going to select all of these. We're going to go here. And by the way, you'll notice when I select them that this highlights, which tells me what that section is. And furthermore, when I pull down this window, it tells me every section that I've used in the structure so far. But I want something much smaller than that. So I'm going to go down to a W uh, 10 by whatever the lightest is, 10 by 12. And I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to reanalyze. And I'm going to go to the results or plot window rather. And now when I click on this, I'm getting 36 kips per square inch. <clears throat> Which is not 50, but it's close to 50. Now, if I, if I wanted to ask myself, what could I find that's lighter? I could go down here and lasso all those again. And I could say, well, when I go back to this library again, um, I could jump down to a W8 by something or other. There's a W8 by 13 and a W8 by 10. So if I pick a W8 by 10 and I say OK, and now I go analyze again, and I go to the plot window and I double click there, I discover I'm above 50 KSI. Just barely though. Uh, a W8 by 10 almost works. I'm just slightly above 50 KSI. So that tells me that with regard to uh, strength, which is, we're going to record here, a W 10 by 12 was the lightest we could go and still satisfy that criterion. Now we still have to check stiffness. So we're going to go back to our uh, multi-frame file and we're going to go to an alternate load case, which is live. And then we're going to go to deflection. And we can either look at this beam or that beam. We don't want to look at one of these interior beams, though, because you'll notice that they have a substantial end deflection associated with the deflection of the primary beam. So to look just at the deflection of the secondary beam, we want to look at this one, which is attached to columns, or that one, which is attached to columns. 
so that we have minimal movement of the ends of these beams so we can look at the overall deflection just of the beam. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to double click on that and it says I have a deflection of 2.042 inches. But we have said all along the maximum deflection that you can have in a 30 foot long beam if your deflection is L over 360 is a one inch deflection. So under live load we have about twice the deflection here that we can tolerate. So now we're saying even though we've designed this to work with uh, W10 by 12 uh, for strength, it's not working for deflection. Well, excuse me, I'm sorry, I just analyzed it with an 8 by 10. So now I've put back uh, 10 by 12, I'm going to go here, I'm going to analyze again, and now when I look at that beam, I have a deflection of 1.17. So it's not too bad, but <clears throat> it's slightly more than one inch. So I'm going to click here to get out of that. I'm going to go back to my frame window and I'm going to say I want to pick the next heavier member than a W10 by 12. So I'll go here and it says I could do a W10 by 15 or I can do a W12 by 14. A W12 by 14, it's 12 inches deep versus a 10 by 15, which is 10 inches deep. But we said the lightest member. This weighs 14 pounds per linear foot, whereas a W10 by 15 weighs 15 pounds per linear foot. So in fact, the next heaviest member is a W12 by 14. So we click OK. Then we go back to this window. We analyze again. We double click on that member and it has a deflection of 0.71. So we say that's OK. And so now we have sized this member and we're going to say a W12 by 14. So when you look at this, the W12 by 14 uh, satisfies both the stiffness and the strength criterion. And so in this case, I've put this in in red to indicate that that's the uh, dominant section that we're going to use. So now we've uh, sized the roof joists. We can move on to the perimeter roof girders. So. Um, and by the way, we have a choice whether we start with strength or stiffness. So this time, let's start with um, stiffness. We discover that under, let me just make sure we're under the correct load case. Yes, we're under live load. When I double click on this, I get a deflection of 0.362. So that tells me that I'm pretty substantially oversized because I should be more in the neighborhood of one inch, less than one inch, but closer to it. And instead I'm uh, at about a third of an inch. So I'm going to go here. And by the way, before I go much further, I'm going to make sure that I make all of my roof secondary beams a W12 by 14. Otherwise I haven't finished the sizing of those members. So now this member is a W18 by 35. We're going to go to something smaller like a W16 by whatever the lightest is, 16 by 26. And now we're going to analyze again. And we'll go to the plot window. And when we click on that, we're getting 0.613. So we may still be a bit oversized. So I'm going to go back to the frame window. I'm going to pick that again. And keep in mind, a W16 by 26 worked, but let's see if we can do a W14 by something or other. We could try W14 by 22. And we're going to go Analyze, go to the Plot window, 
click on the, whoops, wrong member. And now we're at 0.927. So that's about as close as we're going to get. Um, if we go to any lighter member, we're surely going to get too much deflection. We'll have to drop down to a 12 inch beam and for sure the deflection will be excessive. So now when we go back, I'm just going to click on that to remind myself that's a W14 by 22. So when I go to here, I say for stiffness, the single loaded roof girder is a W14 by 22. And for the moment, I'm going to make all of this lettering black because I'm having a hard time just even reading that. So it's a W14 by 22. And now we need to go check it for strength. So we'll go back here. And um, we want to change our load case to and we can't do it in this window. We got to go to the plot window. We're going to change the load case to this and we're going to go to display member stresses bending SBZ top. So S is for stress, B for bending, Z prime is the major axis bending. And now when I do that, I go look at this member and it's at 42.676. So that's about as close as you're going to get to 50. So it turns out we have pretty balanced design on that beam. And as a consequence, um, we're going to go say that this is a W14 by 22 also. Now we want to go look at the interior girder. <clears throat> so we come back here and we're looking under strength at this moment. If we click on that member twice, it turns out it's also about 42. And for that member, we're at a W18 by 35. So we could try going down to a W16 something or other. Um, but we're so close to 50 KSI, it seems unlikely that we're going to want to do that. So <clears throat> uh, relative to strength, I think we've found the correct answer, which is a W18 by 35. <clears throat> now we have to go check strength. So we're going to come back and we're going to go to the plot window. Excuse me, we're going to have to check stiffness. So we're going to go to live load. And now we're going to go to deflection. So we're checking deflection under live load. And when I double click on that member, I'm at 0.275 inches. So to get the best answer for stiffness, we're going to try to downsize that member. And we're going to take this member to a W. 16 by 31 because 35 is the lightest 18 and I don't think we can get to 20 well we'll try 26 just out of curiosity and now we'll analyze linear and now when we click on that member it says 1.227 so that's too light so we're going to go back. It's deflecting too much. We're going to make this a W16 by 31, which is five pounds heavier. And now when we go to the plot window and we analyze linear and we double click on that member, we get 0.985 or so. So now we can go to our Excel spreadsheet and we're going to put 16 by 31. 
So there's a pattern that's already emerging here. Um, you'll notice the heaviest uh, requirement or the governing condition for the lightly loaded roof joists or secondary beams was stiffness. Stiffness required that we go to a 12 inch deep, 14 pound per foot section, whereas strength only required a 10 inch deep, 12 pound per foot section. Then for a more intermediately loaded beam, we got the same beam from both our stiffness and strength criteria. And then for the more heavily loaded, double loaded roof girder, strength seemed to be the governing issue and a W18 by 35 satisfied the strength requirement, but we only needed a W16 by 31 to satisfy the stiffness criterion. So there's a pattern here, which we will see over and over that more heavily loaded beams tend to um, be heavier inherently, which means the webs are thicker. Thicker webs can be made deeper without uh, fear of their buckling. And as a consequence, more heavily loaded beams tend to be inherently deeper. They tend to be stiffer and you know, are inherently stiffer because of their depth. And so stiffness is not so much the governing issue as is strength. All right, so now we can go to the floor joist and we are, these are lightly loaded. So let's check the floor joist for stiffness. So we're going to come along here and we're going to say, okay, we're under live load. We click on that member. We get 0.617 inches. We're pretty sure that we should be able to make those. And by the way, this right here, the, um, that beam's correctly sized. This beam needed to be changed to a W18 by 35 because strength was the governing issue. And then this also should be a W14 by 22. So we have W14 by 22 for both of the perimeter girders on the roof, a W18 by 35 for <clears throat> the interior girder, and then the secondary beams or joists are W12 by 14. <clears throat> so now we're ready to go to work on the floor. And we basically said, we think we can go lighter. So we're going to try W16 by 31. We go back to the plot window. We go to analyze linear and we look at the deflection of this beam and it says 0.839 and you can check it for something else but i can pretty well guarantee you that <clears throat> that's the section uh, so it's a w16 by 31 and we put that right here <clears throat> Okay, so as you have already figured out, I've worked this out already, and um, these are the numbers, but we'll go through a few more here. We figured out we need a W16 by 31 for stiffness on the floor. Um, now we're gonna just go check what we would have needed for strength, and to do that, we're going to go to display, member stresses, bending, SBZ, top and when we double click on this member it says we have a very low bending stress but that's because we're still in the live load case so let's go to our full factored load case now we're at 33 so the question becomes can we pick a lighter member there and according to my previous analysis a w12 by 26 works so let's go try that. We will go to the frame window. We're going to pick these and then go pick a W. And by the way, I think a W16 by 26 will work and maybe a W12 by 26, that's a little shocking. 
Let me see if I did that right. Well, that can't be right because it doesn't exist. Let's try a W14 by 26. And now we'll go to the plot window. We'll analyze linear. And we'll look at it and it says 43.9. So it does work. A W14 by 26 and a W16 by 26 would work. But if we have a choice of two members that weigh the same amount, the W16 by 26 or a W14 by 26, the W14 by 26 will typically be cheaper to roll. And if they're both the same weight, that's what we would go with. So when we come back to our table here, we're going to put W14 by 26 in. <clears throat> And again, we could have had a W16 by 26 also would have worked. So, uh, rather than go through this whole process to the very end, I'm going to come back here and summarize it. Um, for the roof joist, I mean the floor joist rather, which are still pretty lightly loaded. Um, let me make this more readable for you. We had a W16 by 31 as the required lightest section for stiffness. Then the lightest section that satisfied our strength criterion was a W12 by 26. So again, for a lightly loaded member, like a joist, stiffness is the governing criteria. Stiffness governed here, stiffness is governing here. When we get to... Uh, a more intermediate load. They're both 21 inches deep, but there's a slight preference towards strength as the issue. And that's partly because floors are more heavily loaded than roofs. So this is not really a lightly loaded or sort of balanced beam. It's a pretty heavily loaded beam and it's being governed by strength. And then when we get to the double loaded floor girder, uh, strength becomes a really obvious dominant effect and um, so we require a W24 by 84. Now if you go back and compare this example where we're sizing in multi-frame and the sizing that we did out of tables you will get absolutely identical sections in every case for every beam regardless of whether you're sizing for stiffness or sizing for strength, the two methods give you the same answer. That's not always absolutely true. And the reason is uh, the issue that we discussed before, that on steel beams, we give them a 90% hit, due, or 10% hit if you like. We have a resistance factor of 0.9, that says we have to knock down the stress by 10% to account for the uncertainty in the strength of the beam. But then we said the plastic yielding effect actually makes the beam grow stronger um, as yielding occurs, and that effect just about offsets the resistance factor effect. In reality, in some beams, the strengthening due to the hardening that occurs during yielding um, actually slightly more than offsets the effect of the resistance factor. As a consequence, uh, multi-frame and those circumstances, when you keep the stress below 50 KSI, you're actually not stressing those beams quite to the point that they could be stressed to and still be considered quite safe. So sometimes multi-frame will come up with a slightly heavier section. Uh, no one really worries about that very much though because the uh, dis differences are so minute and multi-frame, the multi-frame analysis that we're showing you always errs on the conservative side. So 
as a general rule, we'd say 95% of the time or so, the multi-frame method and the table method are going to give you the same result. But every once in a while, multi-frame will call for a slightly heavier beam. And all you know is that at that point, uh, the results from multi-frame are slightly on the conservative side. In other words, they have, in essence, a slightly higher safety factor associated with them. But both methods are absolutely safe and both methods are completely approved uh, in terms of standard practice in the steel industry. Okay, so that's the sizing process. Um, and you will go through that for an alternate problem, uh, which will be your assignment. And you will be given an active spreadsheet, which looks just like the one above. And the one you're going to be given uh, may have the 30 feet everywhere. And you will have to go in and make some adjustments in it to make sure that you have the proper loads. And then you'll have to fill in the table appropriately. So you will, for example, in yours, uh, give some other dimension here than 30 feet. Um, but you will basically uh, be working the problem using exactly the same method, computing the loads using this kind of spreadsheet, and tabulating the results of your sizing procedure in the two columns corresponding to sizing for stiffness and sizing for strength. So we went over this previously, but we'll go over it again. Relative to this exercise, you will have the following deliverables. You will have worked out all these sizes in your multi-frame file. So your multi-frame file will have been created and worked out in detail to give you, in every case, the lightest beam that will satisfy the criteria of both stiffness and strength. Stiffness under live load, strength under full factored load. Once you have completed that multi-frame file and you have completed your Excel file by typing into the Excel, Excel file the sections that you found in every case, you will then create a Microsoft Word document and into the Microsoft Word document, you will insert an image of the spreadsheet, including the loads information and the final sizing of the members. You will insert a screenshot of the final rendered frame. You will insert, and that should include a legend that tells us based on color what all the sections are. And then you're going to insert an image of the deflected form under live load and an image of the bending stress diaphragm under full factored load. And all that you should present with text large enough that it's readable. Then you're going to upload your Word file, your Excel file, and your multi-frame file. And you're going to give them names according to this scheme. So you'll put your last name first, then your first name. So if I were doing this exercise, I would be place Wayne dash sizing steel beams and multi-frame dash word document for uh, the word file. And by the way, that will have an extension of .docx if you show extensions in your computer. And then you'll have an Excel file with a similar name and a multi-frame document with a similar name. And all those will be uploaded, uploaded for grading. That ends session four, which is the last of four sessions on sizing simple span, wide flange steel beams using multi-frame.